for yeah. the start. Yeah. Hi, Celia. Hi, Oz. How are you doing? You All know what? Right. Right. We're another, doing the meal. Yeah, I had another meeting at the same time, but you know what? Uh, I had a preference definitely to attend with you today. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Neville. <laughs> All it's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to okay. mute my microphone. All right. Okay, guys, let's go and start. Uh, if you can turn off your cameras and your microphones so that uh, we can have a better uh, internet connection and speed, now, especially these days where everybody is online. Here it must be rushed hour now at this time. It's 5.30 p.m. in Toronto and everybody is kind of leaving their desks and moving on to the living room to start streaming the Netflix videos and the YouTube videos and all that and mm -hmm. online gaming. So it's uh, getting heavy on the uh, internet lines. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, I think everyone knows me, but for those who don't, uh, my name is Celia Alves. I'm here uh, in Toronto, and I started this meetup group about a year ago. Uh, I have three more uh, team uh, members organizing the group with me, uh, Abdul, who um, was just on the screen right now, and uh, Vivek and Dick, uh, they all uh, are part of the group. Um, initially, we were um, uh, doing these sessions once a month and in person uh, with the Microsoft Store, most of the times with the Microsoft Store in one of the shopping centers here in the city. Uh, now, with the COVID crisis, we just uh, uh, went online. It was a bit of a challenge at first to figure out all the things we need to figure out with teams and licensing and all that. Um, so it took us a little bit uh, of time to figure out all those things, but uh, we are live now. We have been uh, connecting on a weekly basis now. So we have uh, already two, the past two weeks we had sessions about uh, JavaScript in Excel. And then last week uh, we have Alan Murray from uh, the UK presenting about dynamic arrays uh, and and uh, now we have Oz about Power Query. I think Oz doesn't need an introduction, but I'm still going to do it. For those who may not know him, I don't know if there's anyone who does not know him, uh, but I also wanted to tell a little bit of my story with Oz. He probably is not aware about all the story, <laughs> but I'm going to make it public now. <laughs> Uh, so we were in 2016, around that time, it was when I, wa I started uh, working with Excel more in depth and I started following a number of YouTube channels and trying to assimilate uh, as much as possible. And at some point, someone, I was just following uh, two or three four channels maybe and someone referred uh, Oz's channel. So I went and I subscribed to his channel, started to receive his um, videos on my feed and I would watch everything that came to my YouTube feed at that time because I was following very few channels. And I started um, watching these videos about this weird thing, Power Query, and, and I was thinking, well, what is this? Uh, shouldn't this be a, an Excel channel? What, what is this? And I would see that uh, editor from Power Query that I didn't know. And I was saying, what the heck is this? I, I, well, but somehow Oz was presenting in a way that made me feel that uh, I would probably lose something very important if I stopped watching the video. <laughs> so wow. I kept watching the videos and uh, Little by little, things started to make sense. I remember hearing him saying, what kind of join do you think we should apply now? And I said, what the heck is a join? <laughs> I would think. <laughs> and I said, oh my goodness, I don't know what he's talking about. But I, I started uh, listening uh, one video this week and one video next week and a couple of days more another video. And I was working for a company at that time uh, doing Excel work with uh, VBA, uh, not only Excel, but VBA a lot of automating a lot of things and that's at some point the owner came to me and said you know what it's great what you've done already for us and now what i really needed is something 
to compare our database of this year with the last year. So our sales from this year with the sales from the previous years. Can you do a dashboard for me? And uh, I started thinking and I, I said, well, I know how this goes. It starts like this data, get data from tables last range. <laughs> and here we go. <laughs> and and I started. Now at that time I was ready. I, I had learned uh, enough about Power Query at that time to start just applying things from there. And I built uh, that dashboard that the guy wanted. And uh, and and it, it has, has never stopped from there. I mean, uh, I, I got, uh, I fell in love with Power Query. It's quite addictive. And the story doesn't end there. So besides this difference that uh, this, this, this change that Oz already had made in my life without knowing, um, 2018, beginning of 2018, he published the video saying that he had gone to Brazil to present there at the Excel weekend. And he started telling about us about all those Excel guys in Brazil. And I was thinking, what is this? I don't know these people. I, I, and I started to contact them and I started to on LinkedIn and uh, and I said, well, these people speak my language. I'm, I, my native language is Portuguese and I have family in Sao Paulo that I never visit. Why, why, why am I not there <laughs> at this Excel event? And uh, long story short, uh, two days later, this past January, I was presenting about Power Query in Brazil. So I mean, this is uh, kind of a, <laughs> a story, I, I believe, um, if we look back just three or four years and uh, um, and seeing what it made me evolve. Uh, so thank you, Oz, for the difference that you make to uh, people's professional lives um, uh, and even personal lives every day, even without knowing. Thank you for the content that you uh, deliver online. And uh, yeah, thank you for that. And thank you for being here, for making yourself available to deliver this session for free for um, Excel Toronto uh, Meetup members. And um, just just give us what you get, what oh, you have for today. Right. <laughs> thank well, you so well, much. Thank, thank you, That that means a lot. And I really didn't know that you know, I, I made such a difference for you. I'm glad to have. Yeah, it's know. an honor to have you here today. So uh, for all uh, of these that I have, I've, I've said, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So, um, all right. Uh, so I can share my screen and we can talk about Power Query. Um, you know, something uh, I have fallen in love with Power Query because most of my career has been cleansing data. I don't do visualizations, dashboards, none of that stuff. My life has been this stuff is a mess and somebody's got to unmess it up. And that's been me. And when Power Query came along, boy, I stopped writing VBA code, started doing even more. And uh, so I'm glad to share the gospel of Power Query. I go to bars and tell people about Power Query. All right, so um, I'm gonna go through eight quick things, eight small things about Power Query. Uh, some of them are really small, but key tips, and others are an introduction for you to go deeper on your own. All right, so let me share my screen. And please uh, ask questions along the way. Um, Vivek, and um, Celia, yeah, just yeah. jump in. Anybody jump in. Let's just have some fun on this rodeo. All right. So let me move this window out of the way. OK, so here our first tip. I have this source data, all this aquarium information. And then I've got this set up where this number is part of a query that will filter this. So I can look 600 days or I can look um, the last transaction. Let's look at 200 days and then refresh. Ah, look at that. 
the table resized on me. I don't want that. I want this, just like I put it. And if I refresh again, it's going to fix itself again. How do I stop that? I'm going to go into the table, right click, table, external data properties, adjust column width, Hell no, stop doing that. Okay, now I'm going to go to a thousand days, enter and refresh, and the thing did not shift on me. So that's your first tip. All right. Let's save. Now, here, let me get rid of this. Okay. Now, a warning about filtering in Power Query. All right, so I want to deal with only captains, and then I've got more captains that I need to add down here later. But here we go. Data, and here we go from table slash range. All right. I want to filter for captains. I'm going to say captain. OK, yes, those are the ones I want. OK, but look what Power Query has done. It has hard coded these in here. That is not going to work if I need a dynamic solution. If this is all I'm doing, then that's fine. But adding more captains in, they're not going to get caught. So you got to know about that. And if you do need a dynamic solution here, filters, go to begins with captain. OK. So now when we want to filter more, it will capture the, any new captains and not those hard coded ones. All right? Y'all got that. card I was yeah huh I'm not sure if everyone can see very well um, okay. if he, I don't know uh, if you are able to do some kind of zoom every now and then if people if you are having trouble with uh, seeing what's going on on the screen let us know on the chat okay yeah, yeah. please do yeah, thank um, you all right okay OK, so here I want to talk about merge query as new. So I've got my data here. I've got my query. I've got my transactions query. OK, so what I want to do is merge these two, but I need to merge them by the ID. And I had to dig the ID out of this code. And I did that over here. So now with the ID, I am ready to do the merge, but I've got to make this a query. And from this place, if I was ready to do a query, I would go to do a merge, get data, combine queries, merge. All right, so let's make the query and do the merge from table slash range. Okay. Now I am in here. I've got my categories query now. I can save this and go back out, but no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it from here, from this home tab, merge queries. And then merge queries, if I just did that, it would merge that other query onto this one. I don't want that. I want to merge queries as new so that when I'm done, I'll have a third query. And the two source queries will remain the same. So let's go ahead. I want transactions up top and then categories and then merge them here and do a left outer join. OK. And see, so I've got a third query instead of having the categories merged on to the transactions directly. OK, I'm on. Close that. 
Okay, and open this up. Okay, so we've done that merge and I've saved some steps by not having to go all the way back out. I was able to do it inside the editor and merge queries as new. Okay. So let's go on to. Just a second, to, Oz. I think yep. there was a question from Sardar. Okay. I'm not sure if it is about this file before you yep, move on ahead. to the next one. Yep, go ahead. Sardar, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, or type in the question yeah. on. Thanks. Hi, Oz. Um, Hi. So my question would be like, uh, maybe if we have time, you can also show how after we merge, we can make the initial queries disappear through advanced auditor or some other method. So let's say we have two different tables and we want to carry them as only one single query by changing the advanced editor. Okay, so I'm gonna back to that. Merge. Okay, so what's the question? So we have like, we have two queries here, right? Okay, so let me go ahead. I'm gonna make this second query. Okay, so now we've got the categories query and the transactions query, okay? Well, I think it may not be possible in this case, but my question would be like when, uh, instead of like carrying in two queries, we wanna merge two different tables and carry as one query from the advanced editor. Is, is that possible or it needs to be an external data in this case? To, to instead of having two queries, you want to have one query. Correct. Okay, I'm not really following that. Now, I know that if I were to merge these two, I would just have two unless I merge queries as new, but it sounds like you're talking about something different that I'm not following. Yeah, sorry. So let's yeah. say that we have six tables and we want to, yeah, just the six tables and we want to merge all of them, right? And we want to merge as single one. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you can quickly show it after you have time. Like, I don't want to- I think maybe you could do a sure. merge instead of merge as new, Oz. But still, I think what uh, he's asking is, um, what Sarah is asking is if we can then, after merging, delete the first query. And I don't think you can do that because okay. then the second query or the third query will be looking for the information on the previous queries. You set up When we set up a merge, we say, okay, go to the table of this previous query. Right. So um, you and should... And so, yeah, yeah, so I'm, I would be curious more about the context, right? Because... If you get rid of them, that's fine if you're done. If your result is all you need and you want to take that result, you can get rid of all of the queries. But if you want something dynamic, you're going to be updating later. Then, no, you can't get rid of them. Yeah, OK, thanks. Because I was thinking of, like, I did it before. I did it before through, like, Advanced Editor, mm -hmm. through using uh, M. Yeah. But I was wondering whether there is another method just using the interface. That was yes. my first time. You, you, through the advanced uh, editor, you can put the code of two or three different queries there and, uh, and then enter the code for the merging and the result will be whatever you get at the end of that code. So you would have only one query. Uh, Oper doing different operations, bringing different tables inside of one query. But I'm not aware of anything on the user interface that would allow us allow us to do that. Okay. I'm not that, sure if there is. Okay. Yeah, that was my question, actually. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 I got an answer. Thank you. All right, cool. You're welcome. All right, cool. All right, so this fourth tip, pivot, don't aggregate. This is when I was sold on Power Query because I needed something that was like a pivot table, but pivot tables 
mess with your data. They want to do a sum or a count or an average or something. So right now, I've got this list of students, the instruments they play, and their classes. And we can see that class C11 doesn't have a guitarist. But I don't want to have to eyeball to see, OK, what is A14 missing? I don't know. Let's do this. Data from table slash range. OK, so what do I want on the top? I want the. Class on top. And then. I want to. Go to. Uh, who? I want to go to. Transform and then pivot. And I want to go down here to pivot don't aggregate and what do I want as my values I want my values to be the students okay so now I can see very easily let me go ahead and close and load this to the workbook so I can zoom this in I'm gonna put it right here Now I can see very easily that class B3 does not have a bassist. All right, and I, only, I could only do that because of pivot, don't aggregate down there in that advanced menu. All right, so people like uh, pivot, don't aggregate, you use that. Anybody, somebody. Screen. I don't think I ever used the don't aggregate. Oh, oh, you know about it though. I know, yeah, but I, okay. I maybe I haven't uh, come across with a situation okay. All right. where I thought I could use it, but it's gotcha. very interesting. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it, and right. it's, uh, it's also interesting to see examples where, so usually we tend to think of Power Query of a tool as a tool to unpivot because data mm -hmm. a lot of times comes to us uh, uh, on a pivoted form shape and we need to analyze it and it's easier if we just put it in a tabular form. Um, right. But th there are other situations where we need to do exactly the opposite. So it's very, yeah. very interesting. Very, it is, it is. So, um, all right, so here is a little taste of the joins. Here's a situation where here is my list of music and I've got some Save George, some Criss Cross, some Migos, and then my friend's list. Now I want to know what's on her list that's not on my list. And so that is going to call for an anti-join. And I made a diagram here to show anti-join with some examples of what's on my list that would be this full circle here i've got little red corvette slide by calvin harris uh both of us have little red corvette and slippery by migos but then on her list these are the songs that i need to get a list of everything that's only on hers that's not on mine okay so uh, I've got the queries already made. So uh, let's look here, queries and connections, my list and friends list, get data, combine <laughs> queries, merge. <laughs> there you go again. All right, so uh, my list, friends list, and now because I've got musicians, multiple musicians, and then the songs, we got to match them up. Because so, like we got Hello by Adele and Hello by Eminem. So we've got to do this by two columns. So I'm going to go musician, artist, hold down the control key, songs, songs. There we go. We're going to do a right anti-join. Okay. 
Now, I can get rid of these columns. Now, can somebody say why these columns are null? Because the first two columns belong to the first query. And you are asking for only the entries on the second query. Yep, yep, exactly. All right, so I'm going to remove other columns and then expand. OK, so here is my list of songs and artists that are on my friends list that are not on my list. All right, and I, I got to thank um, I got to thank Cristiano for telling me about Sadie George. Man, that has opened my life up. I'm so appreciative. <laughs> Seu Jorge, Brasil. Seu jo okay. <laughs> <laughs> Brazilian right. musician, uh, yeah, mm. singer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was number five. Okay. Let's look at number six. And we're getting to the end. We're getting there real fast. Okay. So um, we're going to talk about referencing a query. You reference queries, Celia? Oh, every now and then. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So I do that a lot. It's a great you, feature, actually. You do? Okay. Yeah, I do yes, it a it lot. Is. Yes. It's an awesome feature and, because and, it saves you the steps that you need to do from the previous query. You know? Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, here we've got all of these sales. We got the tea and coffee product lines, and then coffee gets paid at 3% and tea 4.8%, but only when the minimum monthly sale is at least $1,200. All right, so here, let's go to my set connections. Okay, so here I brought in the raw data and then you know I removed that totals column unpivoted removed the months renamed the columns all right so now what I'm going to do reference the query and this one is going to be my coffee query and reference again this is going to be the T query. All right. And so the issue is. I had to do these steps on both of them. I could have had a coffee query and and start. You know, peeling the data down and then calculate the commissions, but I would have had to do these same steps for T. No, so I've got coffee. And then I can go here and keep just coffee. Go over here to my T query and keep just T. And then do the uh, do the commissions calculations from here. Right, but they're all. Still connected to the sales query, so anything that updates. It's added, changed, removed in the source data. It is going to update here and trickle into these other two. So that's why we would reference a query. Right. Questions, comments, thoughts, heartache. Everybody's quiet. All right. So that was six. And we are moving very fast. There's oh, a question this here. Oh, this is a picture of when I was in London, went to London and model off, and that was a, a, a picture of um, a painting of Alfred Hitchcock. OK, anyway, yes, there's a question. Christian. Uh... And Jill and Jill uh, is asking any tips, best practices on organizing queries. That's a good question for the end of the session, maybe. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, that is a good question. Okay. So here is something that's pretty neat. All right, so I've got these students and their assignments and grades. This is baking fundamentals and then this is kitchen safety. Okay, so this is the table named safety. This is named baking. Now I need queries. Okay. Data. And you know it. <laughs> OK, so now I've got the baking query. I need the safety query now. So what I'm going to do, right click. Duplicate. Go to source. Safety. All right. Want to enter. Oh. OK. Let's see. Ah. Uh, OK. All right, so I have see that change type step. That's what messed that up. But I did not have to go back out. I didn't have to save this query, go back out and go click on that kitchen safety table and then go to data from table slash range and come all the way back in. All I did was bring this in one time and then duplicate the query and then change the source and it pulled it in and we are ready to go with whatever we need to do. All right. So and then for the last tip. And then we can have a party after this one. Mm -hmm. OK. Here we've got these names and cities and then they've got to be matched up like. London is Paula. OK, there's London and then we've got. New York, New York, but then NY, NY, then there's Australia, which needs to be matched up with Perth. So in the olden days, we would have to clean this stuff up in order to get it merged. Today, we can use a reference table. I'm going to unhide this and see we've got Australia, Perth. And in a conversion table, you do need to have a from and a to column. You can't name these anything else. And you'll see this. So data, queries and connections. I've got my agents, query, the names, query, and the conversion. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and do the merge. Get data, combine queries, merge. I want names and then agents. I do want to do a left outer join. I want the fuzzy matching options. OK, so I want to. Let's see. As my transformation table, that's the conversion table. Right now I'm going to match city and city. OK. Now expand this and see what happens. OK, so it did match up Australia and Perth, but then Grady, Grady didn't get matched up with anything. So anybody, so I'm going to close this. Anybody know what we have to do with Grady to get this corrected? Anybody? Anybody? Take yourselves off mute. Only us can do that magic. What? No. <laughs> Rajji. Guruji. <laughs> uh, all right. OK, so what we're going to do is go back over here. And what we're going to do for Grady is from 
where it says USA, we change that to New York and then go over here, data, refresh. Now it knows wherever it sees USA, it's got to be New York. All right. And then one thing, I showed this in Dallas, and then Bill Jelling was there, and he pointed out Mexico City is not on here. So you're not required to have a match for everything just the things that might have some errant uh, entries or multiple types of entries. So if somebody did suddenly put Mexico or MC or Mexico City comma MX, then we would have to put that in the conversion table. But right now we don't and everything is cool and Grady is all right. So those are the eight tips. Went fast. Uh, so questions, thoughts, needs. Thank you, Oz, for sharing those tips. Mm -hmm. um, so we have that question from Christian uh, asking about any tips for best practices uh, using uh, to, to organize queries? Well, one thing uh, I want to go in here. One thing is to be aware of this query dependencies window because that helps a lot. OK, and this is really helpful when you do have a lot of queries that are intertwined. And I've used this a lot in situations where, yeah, I've got a lot of queries and then there are some that I some that I experimented with that they didn't quite work, but they kind of got me close. So I tried it again somewhere else that I'm actually using so I can come in here and get some idea of which queries I can completely get rid of and not break anything because they're not tied to anything. So use that. And then you can move queries around and try to keep them together. Uh, so those are some of the things keeping organized. Um, uh, other tips are like naming your steps because some because when you do something like removing a column, if you did a whole lot of removing of columns and it's just got remove column one, remove column two, remove column three, what does that mean? You can go in and rename your steps and say removed totals column, removed last names column or, or whatever it was. Uh, so it, you have any other organization tips here or you anybody also, else? You can also group the queries uh, like folders. You can create like folders. Yes. Someone was mentioning that. We can. Uh, and we have those move up and move, move down that sometimes also are helpful. Yeah. Yep. OK, so yes, yeah, so I created folders here, right? And then you can. Um, move this up. Right. OK, because yeah, things can get haphazard and like spaghetti if you don't keep organized. OK, anything else? Any other organization tips? Yeah, I, I, I have to... a question on. Mm -hmm. Yes, Vivek. Yeah, so when you know when you go to uh, load uh, this table into Excel, you have two options: one load it to uh, table and one load it to data model. Which one is a uh, best option and why? That depends on what you're trying to do. Okay, load to data model. That gets over into the power pivot world, kind of. 
All right, but I did do a video on my channel where I showed load to data model. And basically, that's when I have two different data sets that I want to uh, shove into a pivot table. But I don't want to, or it wouldn't be very easy to shove them all together in one table but I can have the two separate tables, load them to the data model, and then use one uh, pivot table to look at that data. Okay. okay. And, yeah, go ahead. No, I was, I was just was thinking about, um, is there an example that I could whip up real fast? But, um, but that's it, that's load to data model that takes you into relationships mm -hmm. with your data. Um, and Oz, when you do that, when you have the two data sets and you want to combine them together into a single pivot table, you, you create relationships between the two data, data sets or not? You can do that in the power pivot menu. Okay, and I'm thinking about um, an, an example I might use. Uh, uh, Oakley is also mentioning that uh, data model, uh, uh, loading to the data model can be a good option when you are dealing with big data. Uh, so instead of loading things physically to your spreadsheet, uh, if you have a million of rows or so, it may be a good option to load to the data model mm -hmm. instead of into a table. Okay, so I got WY Wyoming and let's see. Uh, I think I don't know if this will be such a good example. Data table slash range. OK. So uh, so here we got the names. Okay, and then I'm gonna close and load to load it to a data model. All right. Okay. So let's see. Power pivot. Manage. And it's gone over here. All right, diagram view. All right, so want to match state and state. OK, so and these are here because I added them to the data model. Okay, so now what I can do, let's see, insert a pivot table on a new worksheet. Okay. You forgot right. to, to click uh, the data model. Ah, right, right. <laughs> it's 
stop, okay. stop, stop. In the dialogue, you forgot to put on the data model. Huh? Oh, now it's, no, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, I did it the second time, yeah. And I want to grab this so we can see. All right, so now we have both of these, the name and the state data. And state, let's see, we had the... Uh, Okay. Uh, oh, uh, all. Go to all. Right. Yeah, so one of the advantages that Oz is showing uh, with the data model is that now we can build pivot tables out of different data sets. So instead of having just one table, as we uh, probably learned the first time we worked with um, pivot tables, we were uh, just using the fields existing in one table. This way we can have multiple tables and drag the fields from those different tables and build right. one final pivot table. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So this, this is not a very good example, uh, but the idea is, yeah, we've now have the so, two data sets. Oz so right now you can see a bunch of tables, the tables that are loaded into your grid and the mm -hmm. tables that are in your data model. Mm -hmm. That's why you have more than mm -hmm. two. Yeah. And you want to yeah. choose from two. Right. So I've done a video on this and, um, but this is the general idea is we've got these different data sets that we didn't have to put all together. And um, we can do a single pivot table from the multiple data sources. Thank you. Okay. Someone else. Uh, so Mark Proctor was also, in, also mentioning that using the data model results in smaller file sizes, especially mm. when you are dealing with a lot of data, right? And uh, because it doesn't use the pivot cache. So that could be another advantage of thinking of using the data model, loading to the data model instead Ooh. of. Uh, can I say one disadvantage of like uh, this? Sure. Uh, if you're using like, a, for me, I do a lot of reporting tools. So I'm a huge lover of tables. I'm always on Power Query for that. So if you're using Power Pivot, please correct me if I'm wrong, but the only option to dump the data is using a pivot table. And you always need to use get pivot table formula to get something out of it. And it slows the files down for me. So mm -hmm. just a small note. Okay. But yeah, doing a very big data modeling, it helps, especially with tax formulation, like with measures, it's a great tool. It's just that depends on what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. But if you create uh, measures, then you won't have that performance issue. So if you're trying to use a GAT data, then uh, definitely it will give you uh, slow performance. But if you create a measure within uh, uh, pivot uh, power pivot, then it should be very quick. Yeah, it's just that my issue is the tables itself. So I, I like using tables. I like using like dynamic array functions. Pivot mm -hmm. table, I find it a little bit more limited when I dump data. It's just a personal choice. Right. And what are the limitations of Power Query in terms of, uh, if I say, in terms of using in Excel? Is there any limitation or best practices when you are using Power Query? The, like the, the number of rows of data can't exceed the number of, of rows in a worksheet. That's one mm. thing. Mm. And there are memory limitations that are on the Microsoft website. Uh, but one big thing with Power Query that I understand is resolved in a paid version of Power BI is being able to do an incremental update because I had a client that would get inventory data every week mm -hmm. brought in and go through a whole lot of queries. And by June, the queries were noticeably slow. Mm -hmm. And then by September, 
uh, Power Query would run forever and then crash. And it was because it would start the query by importing all the way back to January 1st, even though they only needed to import, say, the last four weeks. Uh, but we are talking about a whole lot of data that accumulated over these months. Mm -hmm. So they, their solution was to just split it because they were important about 10 clients worth of data. So they split it five and five, and then it was able to run throughout the year at an acceptable rate. Yeah, I, I hope that uh, at some point we get that same feature yeah. that uh, yeah. we have in Power uh, Power BI available in Excel as well, because uh, I have situations like that as well, that uh, at some point we have so much data, that, but, but the data in the past hasn't changed. Right. So it doesn't make sense to having to import all over again from the beginning when we know that only the past few weeks have changed or have something new. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone, uh, Miniard was asking, do you use M code a lot? And if you do, are there any code snippets that uh, you, you could have maybe on hand to share or maybe later? I don't know. I hardly use M code. I go in and I make small modifications to it when I need to. But no, I don't use M code a lot. And Anthony was uh, pointing was advising always delete the data type step and then and, later. Yeah. and i know a lot of people do believe that and then there's a way of turning that off turning that default off so that power query doesn't do that to you all the time um, so it depends on your context what do you need does it constantly goof you up and 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 does create problems you know, then yeah, go ahead and turn it off or get in the habit of deleting it. Yeah, that setting actually at the moment only works at the file level. So if you want to turn that setting off of automatically detecting the data type, um, you need to do it every file, every new file you want that off. Uh, it may be worth uh, in files where you are, you are building a lot of queries. Um, so that's that's the, the only thing for me because it, it, the setting is at the file level and not at the all power query at Excel level. Uh, Grain, uh, Grain was asking about um, the order that queries refresh. Is it is there a way to understand what triggers each query to load first than others? I don't know. Yeah, if you connect to Dex Studio, your Excel file. OK. Uh, and then uh, you do uh, query diagnostic. Uh, there are few things that uh, it will give you telemetry on uh, which query is refreshing first okay. and which one is refreshing. Or maybe copy same step or same query to Power BI, which is a free desktop and turn on the query diagnostic where that will give you even your query timing and which query is running when you interact or when you pull the data also. How can we uh, get that tool at the DAX Studio, Vivek, do you know? Is it free? Uh, is uh, it it free is tool? free, uh, it is SQL BI by Mark, Marco Russo. Uh, you can connect uh, your file. You can you can download uh, DAX Studio from SQLBI.com. Yeah, somebody and then just uh, you could sorry. you could add it as a plugin to Excel as an add-in, or you could run the desktop version and connect it to Excel as well, and it gets connected. But I think you usually have to have a data model, as far as I know. Yes, and even there is. Uh... A uh, monkey tools which are available right now by Excel Guru Ken Plus, uh, which gives such kind of a memory management and it shows that what is the refresh time for the query. And uh, you don't need to go back to your query editor and edit the query. You can edit the query there and there itself on the 
uh, there itself on the add-in. Wow. That's an amazing tool. Wow. Yeah. I haven't tried it yet, yeah. One I've... question us uh, before we close is, is there any way to refresh the Power Query automatically? So say every morning I want to refresh, if I have my file open, uh, I want to refresh it automatically. Is there any way to do that? Like in Power BI, when you push it to service, you have refresh. Same way in Excel, is there any option? Right. Uh, I know I we have an option sure. of refresh every, refreshing every one hour or 10 minutes or something like that. We can define the time in between uh, each time it refreshes. Is it in uh, Excel? In Excel. I'm not sure if you can define um, a, a time, a specific time. You can you can uh, the, uh, set it up to refresh when opening the file. You can uh, make it refresh when you push refresh all. Uh, you define that for each one of the queries, and you can define uh, set the query to refresh every thirty minutes, for example. I'm not sure. I can't remember uh, by heart if we also if can also define a specific time. I don't remember. I don't recall having seen that option. If someone knows, let us know in the comments. Uh, it, it requires VBA, I think. Yeah, so VBA. It, it, yeah. Uh, with, with, that that, yeah, yeah. With, test, with mm -hmm. test scheduler and you know with VBA code you can get it done, but it needs to be on your own computer. So you need to keep it open, I guess. You could also use a VBA event to refresh the whole workbook when the workbook is opened. Oh, okay. Yeah, but with the timer, is there a way to do it with the timer? Like you need you need to have it as a you need to run a script for that and the company. Yeah, yeah. So by by assigning variable and then incrementing uh, in a timer. Uh, we can increment in the timer. Yes, you can. You can. From the moment you start, uh, you need to activate the macro. I mean, mm -hmm. run the macro and then define a starting time and um, create a loop or something like that that makes the, the macro uh, do the same action every certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. For example, that could be a way. But you need to keep your file open, of course. Well, if you are refreshing, you need to have the file open anyways, and you need to run to run your macro. Okay. Thank you. I already have a link by Christian. So I'll have a look at it. Thank you. OK, and I'm being asked about referencing versus duplicating. And speed has never been a concern of mine. And I know, you know, I've seen people do the speed tests and everything, but speed has never been anything that I've had to worry about, except that one time with the with the um, updating of all that inventory data. Uh, so I don't have an answer about the duplicating versus the referencing. In terms of speed, you mean? Right, in terms of speed. I would I, I would tend to, I never measured speeds uh, either, but I would say that if you duplicate uh, and then you refresh both queries, you are repeating yeah. the same steps twice, all the steps that uh, were duplicated from one step to one query to the other. Whereas if you refer one, the first query on the second, the first query refreshes, and then the second one starts with the result from the, fir the first query, starts off from there. Uh, so if you are dealing with a lot of data and with big, um, qu long queries with a lot of steps, it make, I would assume that re referencing, referencing would be faster than duplicating on a situation like that. That'd be a guess, yeah. Yeah. Um, if I may, I have an example with um, uh, from folder from Excel files. 
And as you add Excel files, it, the query becomes slower and slower because it has to open each Excel file. It has to find that particular worksheet and pull data from that worksheet, a certain um, columns. So, so that slows down a lot, which you cannot, I mean, in case of from folder, if it's a TXT or CSV file, it's much faster. But if it's from Excel file, it like as you add 12 months of data, then it's slowed um, significantly. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other comments or questions? Um, yeah. Someone was asking about self-reference queries. I lost where that is on. Christian, I think, was asking about an example on self uh, self merging, and someone mentioned self referencing. So I'm not sure if you would have something from the top of your head for that. Self referencing. An example. Self referencing. I'm not sure what that would be. Now, I have a long time ago had a query reference the same workbook that I'm in done that but are, would it be a question about a query reference in itself i believe so self or self merging self merging what would self merging be christian where you at <laughs> Merge one query to itself. Um, there is a video uh, where um, I did merge a table with itself, but crisscrossed the table, the, the columns that were being matched up. Uh, and Miguel Escobar had shown me that. So there is a video on merging a table with itself, but for a very specific reason. Query inception table variable. Ah, uh, okay. So, seems like Christian has an answer. All right. Yeah, <laughs> great. That uh, people are paying attention to the, to yeah. the chat and they are yeah. giving tips to each other. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Anyone else? Uh, so we are just uh, we just uh, passed about one hour since we started. Uh, it's it's coming the time to wrap up and uh, say good night to everyone. If if someone wants to turn on their mics and yeah. uh, ask questions or make any comments or just feel oh, free to do that. Paul is here from London. Yeah, just uh, one uh, one answer. <laughs> oh. I don't. No, sorry, somebody was uh, asking a question about folder and the performance getting slower. Uh, what you can do, and what I have done actually in that terms is, I check when it was updated. So if you have a uh, 50 worksheets, uh, first I check when it was updated, and I put a period. Say if last five days it is updated, then I refresh. Otherwise, I don't refresh. So I separate two query from the same folder, and only in last five days, if there is a change, I update. So in that way, uh, it will be much more efficient, and uh, you you can uh, improve the performance. Just a thought. That's what I did. That's, so that's a good the tip. Power BI? Is, that, is that with the Power BI? Or no, in Excel. With Excel? Yeah. So you have number of days for refresh? You can, uh, is there a way to do that? Yeah. Great. Uh, is there, uh, you are checking the time it refreshed or the, the, the time the, the files tell, were changed? Metadata will tell you uh, when it was uh, last updated. Okay. That as a reference. And where is metadata available? Do you okay, know? Okay, so when you top of your head, it to the data. 
Yeah. And you initially load the data. Yeah. That's a nice tip. Thank you, Vivek. So, Vivek. So for yeah. that you need you need separate uh, queries, right? Yes. So that you run yeah. only the query for the latest data. That's correct. Okay. In my case, it's one query that pulls from folder yeah, where I keep adding merge, the Excel file. You can merge both after it refresh. So you'll have one query as output, but uh, refresh will be different. Okay. So I have to create more queries as I add files. No, it will automatically pick up. That's the power of Power Query, right? Let's take it offline. All right. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. And Andrew Chan is here. Hello. Hello. All right. So there's a lot. A lot. Yeah. Let's go put the beer on ice. Tanya. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, here it's uh, getting. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm uh, in Toronto. It's time for dinner. Mm. Um, so um, I think it's uh, it's a good time for uh, start ending our meeting. Yeah. yeah, it's in the U.S. Some of us it's sleep time. I know. I know. Some of you just joined us uh, so late in your countries, yeah. and for others it may be early in the morning. Yeah. Uh, oh, Marcelo from from Brazil, stay home. He says <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, the Corona situation Dan has messed up with my sleep pattern, so yeah, I'm awake yeah. sometime three o'clock. Mm. Just wake up. Yeah, and it's eleven thirty with Paul in London, and um, Danielle says it's time for breakfast in Australia. Yeah, so. But yeah, thanks for yeah. being here. Thanks for having me. And, uh, yeah, Oz, uh, would you yeah. like to share where where people can find your content, where people can contact you if they need to? Uh, please feel free to to uh, share any of that information. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, the video will be posted uh, later uh, for you to 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 replay it if you want to. Thank you so much for, for coming and Oz, uh, the session is yours um, for, for you to, to say goodbye and uh, share with us where we can find you online and any other tips you want to leave to us. Okay, well, thanks everybody for having me. Thanks for the participation and everybody helping each other out with a lot of these questions around our data, because that's how we're going to win over crap data is helping each other get this stuff straightened out and making people's lives go right. And you can find me on my YouTube channel, Excel on Fire, and on LinkedIn as Oz Du Soleil. Yes. And we have other other people here. Um, yes. Yeah, Danielle, Danielle from... Uh, from uh, Australia. Australia. She's also running meetups, um, yeah. and uh, Alan from uh, London. He's also running meetups on Excel, and so there's a lot of content these days. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, follow these people online, and uh, there's there's great content happening all the time. Danielle just put uh, put her link there. Yep. So thank you so much, Oz. All uh, right. It was a great session, I believe. Thank it, you, Oz. Uh, Thank you. It, it was All right. great. Bye bye. Have a good night, Thank everyone. You. everyone. Thank you so night. much. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from London. Thank you. I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>